Hello humans! I'm Alora Scott, the storytelling saint, and welcome back to Story Kitchen. Attack on Titan is one of my most beloved fictional series in this world, and I give Hajime Isayama a great spiritual kiss on the cheek for his genius in creating the series. His world building, his foreshadowing, his themes are something very special to me and I think every creative person can learn from him as well as audiences. There's gonna be spoilers all over this video. Now I know Isayama gets some criticism for seemingly having pro-militaristic and even pro-fascistic imagery in his work, but I don't fucking agree with that. To me, Attack on Titan covers themes that are anti-war, anti-slavery, anti-bigotry, pro-personal freedom, and pro-exploration. And a realistic, optimistic approach to making peace and the missed opportunities from failing that. Which is why I've seen a lot of people disappointed with the manga ending of Attack on Titan. It seemed like so much foreshadowing and thematic connections was either rushed or scrapped and it hurt the overall brilliant story that Attack on Titan was being built on. Especially the themes surrounding Emir, the founder of the Titans, the former slave, the demigoddess of the Eldian people, Eren, the devil fighting for freedom, looking to make his way back to the mother of Eldians, and Historia, the worst girl in the world who wants no one to feel like they shouldn't have been born. And so that's why I have to say that Eren and Historia are Attack on Titan's most important ship. And this is why I think that. So Eren Yeager is our main protagonist. He starts off as a young boy penned in his death cage in the walls of Shiganshina. All of his people who live within the walls believe that they are the only humans left in the world, trapped by enormous man-eating monsters in the thousands called Titans. With the help of his friend Armin, Eren learns that he wants to be free, out of the walls to see the world beyond and free them all from the constant impossible danger that are the Titans. Eren in the first chapter of this series learned the true horror when his wall is attacked and his city is overrun with titans. He, his family Mikasa, and his best friend Armin are left as orphans. Eren's journey to self-realization and the reality of where their people stand in the world itself starts when he joins the Survey Corps, the exploratory combat sect of the military within the walls. As Eren learns how to fight titans, how to fight as a titan, to trust his comrades and to trust their progress, he watches people die to the intelligent titans who have an advantage over them and seem hell-bent on killing them all. But in all this loss, Eren and his team learn the nature of the titans themselves, slowly, devastatingly. Their enemies start out in their midst. Annie, then Reiner and Ber Bertolt are all a small sample of the danger and mystery that awaits Eren and his people outside the walls. Whereas inside the walls, the royal Rice family is holding all their people hostage at the mercy of the slaughter that awaits them outside. It's crazy, we don't even learn what Eren's race of people are yet inside the walls. Just that slowly they see that their lives are constantly in danger by forces more powerful than them. So they learn that Historia, a member of the Survey Corps, is a secret descendant of the royal family and that Eren holds the royal titan power alongside his own titan power. For Eren, the discovery of his meaning all comes together after they free Shiganshina and defeat Reiner, Bertolt, and Zeke. Eren's father, Grisha Jaeger, his secret basement, his rage at life outside the walls, his inheritance of the attack titan power and his bloody capture of the royal founding titan all come together when Eren kisses Historia's hand as queen. The memories of previous titans pass down to each inheritor and Eren connects both the spirit of the attack titan along with the memories of Emir, the founding titan through Historia's royal blood. So Historia Rice, who we first know as Crystal Lens at the beginning of the series, is one of Eren Jaeger's comrades and later confidants. 
When her arc in the story picks up, we come to find how her life was parallel to Eren's. Historia as a girl was moved to a peaceful farm with her mother, where they were taken care of. The reason being, Historia was the illegitimate daughter of the true king, Rod Rice, and her mother was his mistress. Though they lived relatively comfortably, Historia's mother was always cold and distant to her, and never helped out on the farm. I mean, the first thing her mother ever said to her was that she wished she could kill her. She's a bitch. In the distance, when Historia seems safe, the walls are being attacked in Erin's town. Then her father comes to visit her for the first time with her mother along with him. He lied and promised to take her home. But instead, Rod Reese disavowed Historia and her mother to his special guards who had surrounded the house and killed Historia's mother right in front of her. Her mother's last words that were that she wished Historia had never been born. Historia was about to be killed by Rice's men too because she was an illegitimate child and shit was going down. But the king changed his mind and had Historia change her name to Crystal Lens so she could live a life disconnected from his. As a teenager, Historia joined the Survey Corps where she met Freckled Emir, Eren, and the rest of our main characters. Living as Crystal Lens, Historia went through an identity crisis especially as part of the Survey Corps, where people frequently died. Fellow cadet and almost lover, Emir, Freckled Emir, observed Historia and deduced that Historia wanted to be seen as nice and sweet and likable, even to the point where it might kill her. From there, Emir pushes Historia to be herself, selfish, nice, just not beholden to the whims of other people. And Historia did the same for Emir. Historia's personality gradually began to shine through and burst open as their strong bond and secrets came to light. Unfortunately, Emir left Historia to go back with Reiner and Bortolt, the enemies of Historia's people, but they both had changed each other. Once Historia is revealed as a descendant to the royal family line, and Eren was revealed to have the founding titan powers with him, there was a mad rush as Rod Rice's men tried to destabilize the Survey Corps and steal away Historia and Eren, and they did it successfully. So when Historia is reunited with her father, he tries to convince her that he was keeping her safe and secret, but now it was time for her to claim her place in the royal family. She would have to eat Eren and take back the powers that his father stole. And Historia almost let herself be convinced by him. Her desire to be loved and to have a family connection, as well as to be good and helpful, nearly had her accept her father's offer. But then she realized a few things. Her father abandoned her for dead since she was a little girl, after killing her mother, and only came to get her when it was convenient. Neither of the previous royal titans had ever saved the people in the walls from the titans. Rod Reese was too afraid to take the titan serum himself and would use her as a sacrifice for it. And lastly, Eren. In this moment, after hearing Rod Reese's side of how Grisha Yeager captured the founding titan power, Eren was okay with letting Historia eat him because he felt guilt, shame, and anguish that the whole royal family was killed because of his father. And he was convinced by Reese's story that he would be better off being eaten so that Historia could use his powers to atone for it. But Historia rejected her father and freed Eren and herself. She chose herself and decided to escape with Eren as her biggest act of rebellion. And she was made queen for it after defeating her giant freaky royal titan dad. But in becoming queen, Historia and the Survey Corps not only put an end to the corruption and abuse of the royal family, but pushed them all forward as a people trying to understand where they stood in the world and what the fuck the titans were even about. So there are a lot of parallels in Eren and Historia's journeys. Their childhoods start out with fear and horror, Eren's city being attacked and his mother being eaten, Historia watching her mother's throat get cut and having her whole identity and life uprooted, Eren feeling too weak and powerless to help his friends and avenge his mother, 
his story of feeling too weak and helpless to help herself. Both of them went through periods of their life where they felt or were treated like they didn't deserve to exist. They also find meaning in themselves by simply asserting that they should live and do what they can according to that. Historia is the queen of a now free, knowledgeable people and sets herself to the task of managing the lives of the orphans and the wretched that were held down within their walls for so long. And Erin and the Survey Corps, with their new knowledge and success, secure their home from the Titan threat and managed to take back their entire island, which they had thought previously was impossible. And Emir, the original founding Titan, is at the center of both their stories. Now, I already explained Emir, the founder's or origin story, in my Daenerys and Emir analysis that you should definitely watch after this. But when Eren kisses Historia's hand, it connects their story of fear and horror to Emir's fear and horror of living and killing and dying as a slave. Except Eren and Historia are an image of success compared to Emir. But not perfect. Certainly not perfect. So we see parallels of Emir's painful journey and afterlife echoing through Historia and Eren. I mean, Historia bonded with a girl named Emir who wanted her to live for herself. And that's because Freckled Emir suffered and was persecuted in similar ways to founding Emir. And Eren has the Attack Titan. Emir's Titans, I believe, represent different positive and useful parts of herself. And the most crucial is the Attack Titan. Her fighting will for freedom separated from her for 2,000 years. Historia is Emir's direct descendant, and although she suffered, she managed to overcome the same oppressive bloodline that cursed Emir for centuries. And Historia has never been a slave to the Titan power. Eren wants to keep it that way. For Emir, for Historia, Eren as the Attack Titan has been passed down for two millennia, all to reconnect with Emir to free her from her trapped curse of forever having parts of her enslaved to warmongering. And you can tell that Emir is proud of her Eldian heritage. She can call the Eldian people to her magic realm of the paths and communicate with them. And any Eldian can become a Titan. One of the criticisms that Attack on Titan gets is that it's about some sort of blood purity shit. But I disagree with that. As an Eldian, Emir was enslaved by King Fritz, who was also Eldian. But I'll save that for another video. Historia becomes pregnant by her own choice. Emir was forced to give birth to expand her power. So I also believe that Emir's attack titan, while representing her self-defense and sense of freedom, also represents her love. When Grisha Jaeger was passed the attack titan by Eren Kruger, he was told to find someone to love, to bond with, to pass on the attack titan and Eren tells Emir to love herself in the paths. He watches Historia love herself by defying her father. Freckled Emir was in love with Historia, but it wasn't meant to be. Why wouldn't Eren and Historia have a child of love? A child of Emir's family line, born into freedom without the Titan power. Emir was forced to have children, and then they were forced to eat her body to pass on her power. And Eren loves his people, and that includes Historia's baby. He loved them so much that he would destroy the rest of the world so he could live in his psychotic idea of peace. There are signs that point to the Eren Historia love child. Most glaringly is Eren's secret meeting with Historia about his ultimate evil plan and Historia admitting she wants a child. There are strange little hints dropped throughout Historia's pregnancy, even though she doesn't really appear that much going forward her due date especially. When another soldier talks about Historia's pregnancy in the manga, there's a flashback to Historia approaching the farmer, the alleged child's father, but Eren is also there. In that scene where Historia admits she wants to have a child, it cuts over to Zeke and Eren talking in Marley, and Zeke asks Eren, what will you do? We next see Eren maiming himself, torturing himself to see his destructive plans through. And Levi mentions that Historia will give birth in a few months. 
But in the manga, when Eren takes on Emir's power and starts the rumbling, Historia is giving birth then. Now that is symbolism. 2,000 years in the making. Attack on Titan is not a romantic series, so Eren and Historia's baby theory is hotly contested. And in the anime, which Isayama said would end differently, Historia does not give birth during the rumbling, which I think hurts the story narratively. But Attack on Titan so far has been one giant plot twist. Why wouldn't something as subversive and crucial as Eren taking Historia as his lover and having a symbolically free child with her not be considered? I also have my thoughts on Mikasa, but I will save that for another video. Ah oh, well, at least if they are not going with that path of love, Eren in his ultimate titan form will hopefully be defeated by the series' second most important ship, Armin and Annie and that will be for another video too. And that's it. Those were my thoughts on this Attack on Titan theory. It makes a lot of sense to me in the way the series has been written so far. Emir's struggle seemed to be coming to that point where a child of her line, or maybe even a reincarnation of herself, will be born free, fathered by the Titan who was supposed to free her. I am so inspired by this love story. And if you like love stories, you should get a copy of my visual novel, Niche Tales Under Her Skin, at alorascott.com. Indulge yourself. But that's all I got to say. I really want to know how you feel about this theory and just about Attack on Titan in general. I really love this series. So let's talk about it in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching and thank you for following me here and subscribing. Goodbye.